Most people have spent their life going through thin and fat faces. It is this desire to have a trim or healthy body that has seen several experts pitch tent in Kenya. Dr. Mohit Bandari, a bariatric surgeon in Nairobi's Third Park Hospital, is one of the leading doctors that are seeing an increase in the number of Kenyans queuing at weight loss clinics or making inquiries. He tells us about gastric bypass, also known as weight loss surgery, which he says is underutilized in Kenya. We cut a part of the stomach or we bypass a part of the intestine and we modify the gastrointestinal tract in a way that we sort of create multiple effects where not only that we reduce the amount of food an individual would consume but we would also bypass a part of his intestine to make sure that the fats and the sugars are not absorbed and in that very large quantity. For most women, if not all, how they look like really matters. Looking good is actually an incentive, but sometimes we get those who want to deal with diseases such as blood pressure that are associated with obesity. 53-year-old Judith Thathi is one of Dr. Mohit's patients. Her knee problems were due to her weight. I had problems with my, both my knees. Mm -hmm. They were paining and I had to use a crutch to walk. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually overweight. But before then I had a problem with my hip, which was uh, operated on 2014 mm -hmm. in India. Uh, I had a total hip replacement. This also came with my weight, mm -hmm. but I waited too long. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was coming uh, to see him, I actually was getting up from my seat by holding on the chair with my, sh and, uh, with my hands and then like kind of bending over before I started walking mm -hmm. a bit and I was in pain. I couldn't even walk 200 meters mm -hmm. without a crutch. I was always in pain. On her part, 53-year-old Sonja began getting bigger during the COVID-19 pandemic when walking was a task and changing of her wardrobe was the order of the day. I kept increasing in weight. I started to think about can I walk to the shopping center? Do I want to go to the supermarket? That was happening. People were telling me I was breathing heavy, but foolishly, I wasn't really associating that with weight loss mm -hmm. and that continued, believe it or not, for a year and a half until unfortunately I fell and I damaged my knee. Susan Modoni Kimani is not any different from the rest. How you see her now, proud of how far she has come with her body, is a joy to her. All thanks to Dr. Mohit for the bariatric surgery. When I was bigger, um, um, I, I was eating a, lo a lot of chapatis, mm -hmm. a lot of lies. I had a lot of appetite. Mm -hmm. That's, why, uh, that's why, why my condition was very bad. Be because if you eat those things, definitely your weight becomes big. Mm -hmm. And you, you develop a lot of diseases. I developed diabetic, I developed high, high blood pressure and, and blood clot for the last 22 years. Sonja takes us through her diet before the bariatric surgery. I love tea. Let me start with tea <laughs> because you are going to think it's a plate. No, it starts with tea. Mm -hmm. I had about, because the doctor counted with me, about eight cups of tea in a day. Mm -hmm. and each one required three teaspoons of sugar because I didn't drink soda but I love juice mm -hmm. but it wasn't natural juice it was box juice okay, okay? Mm -hmm. I never drank water water was not on the list mm -hmm. And even though every individual's journey is different before and after the surgery, Judith and Sonja have a story to tell regarding their experience after the procedure. Previously, I could eat anything and everything mm -hmm. until I'm full. You know, kawaida. Mm -hmm. You can eat anything and everything. But after the operation, uh, you first start with the liquid diets, mm -hmm. which even at times are very hard to take down at 40, 50 ml uh, for two weeks 
then uh, you increase to the heavier liquid diet, which is still a struggle. Mm -hmm. And um, the water intake, which is still a struggle mm -hmm. for the first month. But uh, there's medication, which you need to take religiously, without fail. The problem comes when you're to start to eat food, because yeah. you're intake is restricted and so the nutrients that you generally get from food normally every day your choma your chicken your rice your well i wasn't doing too much on vegetable but your potato <laughs> you this um you one you don't want it two you can't eat a lot of it yeah. three if you push yourself the body is going to tell you you were naughty and it mm -hmm. will come out. Yeah. So you have to become very, very intentional about what it is you are going to eat because you're going to get full mm -hmm. very quickly. Yes. Okay. So your muscles need protein to build up. Yeah. According to Dr. Mohit, 5 to 8 percent of the Kenyan population have diabetes and 30 percent are overweight, a situation that has caused the health of many people. And I feel that's the reason why we have a very high incidence of type 2 diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, you know, coronary artery disease and several other problems uh, related to obesity in this country. Uh, and I think this is the right time where, you know, as they always say that uh, nip them early in the bud. If we try and uh, treat individuals who have morbid obesity at a very early stage, uh, we do not let them go into deep diabetes or spoil their joints or get severe sleep apnea so much so that it decreases their mental concentration and they have to be on a non-invasive BiPAP machine. Dr. Mohit, who has conducted more than 20,000 bariatric procedures with an average time of 30 to 40 minutes, tells us that bariatric surgery is just an opportunity for a lifestyle change, calling on those who have undergone the procedure to adhere to a healthy living. Patients who are chronic alcoholics, uh, sweet addicted patients who would take soft calories in forms of syrups, uh, would not adhere to any lifestyle modification but would smoke continuously, go on a drug abuse, uh, these are the patients who will not have good results with surgery in long term. Short term, everything is very hunky-dory, but when we talk about long term, these are the you know red flags. So yes, uh, we have to stick to a lifestyle. Bariatric surgery makes it a cakewalk uh, to do a lifestyle modification, but yeah, uh, it comes with the caveat that one has to stick to a lifestyle modifications and uh, the rules are very simple. The difference, both physically, emotionally and mentally to the patients, is all the motivation we all need to ensure that weight or obesity is not the root cause of all the possible health issues we could have. I am shocked to say I have lost almost 50 kilos. It is like I've lost a human being, <laughs> an 8-year-old or a 10-year-old. Right? Yes. When I came in, I was weighing 141.3 mm -hmm. kilos. Today, I weighed myself, I'm weighing 100.6 kilos. Mm -hmm. I've lost like 40 kilos in five months. Wow. I have lost 20, 25 kilos. Yeah. And all my conditions had gone. Roby Omondi K24 Evening Edition. Did you eat? Was it junk food? Was it what kind of meals or food or diet basically did you have? 